Hey everybody, what's going on? We're back with some sort of Convalaria. We've got another really, really nice Epic to take a look at today, and I'm pretty stoked to show her to you because if you haven't given her a look yet, I think that you're gonna be pretty happy to add her to your teams. She is so good. So if you didn't see my video yesterday on Flare, I'll card to it up there. I would highly recommend that you go watch that video if you're not familiar with Flare yet, because she is so good. She is, as it stands right now, still my favorite Epic. We have a lot to look at, so that could change, but right now she's my favorite. And uh, I'm calling Flair a she. There was a little bit of, of question about whether or not Flair's a she. I think Flair's a she. There's heels on the boots, so I assumed, <laughs> but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully I haven't misgendered two characters in the first week of the game, but um, anyway, we're gonna stick with she until we learn otherwise for sure. Uh, but today we are taking a look at Abyss. Now, Abyss is a really cool looking character, first of all. Uh, she is also a debuff factory. The amount of debuffs that she puts out is insane. And she has been so helpful for me, particularly, I've been swapping her in a lot of different places to see how, she, to, how I feel about her. Uh, she was really helpful for me in Weapon Trial, where it has to be ranged. We're gonna do some videos about Weapon Trial because it's it's a pretty fun dungeon, but you do need to be very aware of the mechanics and stuff going into it uh, as, as the difficulty spikes. But Tower of Conquest, Abyss has been really helpful for me in here. Uh, if you haven't been doing much of this content, it ramps up quick. <laughs> the first few stages are pretty easy. Starting at 2-1, it starts to get kind of difficult and it ramps up again very, very quickly. So she's been pretty integral to my success here as well. Um, so let's go in and talk about how I've built her and then maybe we'll just jump into a battle just so you can see her in action a little bit. Again, I don't have a lot of super difficult content to test her out in that's not gonna take, you know, 15, 20 minutes to clear, but I'll, I'll, we'll let you see her in action a little bit to see what kind of what I'm talking about with, with her, her debuff output. So uh, if we just jump into rank real quick, she's a magic dealing champ, so her basic attack is just basic damage. Starting at rank one, you start unlocking skills. Uh, I went with Dark Withering. Now, again, much like with Flare, much like as it seems to be with every character in the game, there's really no wrong way to go. It's gonna depend heavily on your play style and what you're trying to accomplish specifically with the character. And I do wanna give a nod to the devs here because they seem to have done a fantastic job of making all the skills viable. You know, usually in these games, there's 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 a meta. There's, there's a, a specified way to go that's the obvious way to go every time. I'm seeing a lot of options that seem very viable on all of these characters so far, and I that that seems to be very hard to accomplish because very few games have pulled it off. So nod to the to the devs here on this one. Um, I went with Dark Withering, inflicts life loss equal to 50% of magic attack to all enemies within a two tile radius of the target, and inflicts healing received lasting for two turns. So this is a pretty cool pretty cool effect and again it's it's a debuff that gets put up we're at the end of their turn they take some damage based on our magic attack right so the higher we can scale our magic attack the more impactful this skill is she's also got incredible range and um and and effect height it's a nice skill here i almost went with this i almost went with this it's a two-turn sleep it's not very damaging, but the uh, the sleep, taking somebody out of the fight for two turns is huge in this game. Turns are so long. So a two-turn sleep is pretty beefy, right? So again, no wrong answer there, but I'm, I'm discovering that my play style seems to be, I wanna disrupt as much as possible. I wanna introduce as much chaos into things as possible. And I want as much going on between my active turns as possible. Um, whereas, you know, maybe some of you like your, your active turns to just be real hard hitters. I'm not so concerned with that as much as I am. I want disruption. I want chaos. I want things triggering between my turns constantly. That that has been more fun for me. So that's where I'm leaning. But again, no wrong options, it seems, on her. For her rank three, she gets a, a passive. It's, it's, it's a passive option. I went with corruption. At the end of the turn, inflicts two random level one attribute debuffs on one random enemy within a three tile radius of the character lasting for two turns. Inflicts two debuffs on a random enemy within a three tile radius that lasts for two turns. That is nasty. The other option here is energy recovery and also solid option. This will help her pump her skills out a lot more regularly and, and do all the things that she does. But this this one seemed a little bit uh, more my vibe, you know what I mean? So that's that's what we went. This is also a very, very viable option. 
Rank 5, I went Protection of Darkness. When hit by an attack, the damage taken is decreased by 8%. Before being hit by an active attack, for every debuff on the attacker, decreases damage taken by an additional 10% up to 30%. So up to 38% damage reduction from this alone, I thought would be pretty helpful. I anticipated that she would be fairly squishy, so I wanted to give her this protection a little bit. Um, and then here are some ranged attack protection as well. It's just a flat out 25%, which is also definitely something to think about because ranged attacks, they get rough, man. As I'm climbing up, in, I think I just cleared chapter three of Voyage and it, some of these ranged attackers, dude, they're rough. And the tower, the, the, the stage I just cleared, the last one I cleared was ranged guys and they hit hard. So this, this could also be handy, but I figure with the way that she's gonna be pumping out debuffs, she's gonna compliment herself with this. And pretty, I, I think it'll be fairly rare she's getting attacked by someone with no debuffs based on the way we're setting her up. So that's the way I decided to go. Uh, for rank seven, we get the leader aura or dark ripple, deals 70% AOE damage to all enemies within a two tile radius and inflicts no passive skills, no reaction skills. This is definitely my vibe. So it's the way I'll be going when I get her to uh, rank seven here. And then for rank nine, we get a basic attack improvement. So you can either add some energy restoration to your A1, or you can have it inflict passive skills on injured targets before attacking. Uh, if this wasn't on injured targets, I would take it in a heartbeat. I think having no passive skills just flat out on the A1 would be huge. The fact that they have to be injured uh, deters me a little bit. I still think it's a great option, don't get me wrong. Uh, but for what I wanna do with her, I think that adding this to her A1 will help me do all of the other stuff that I wanted to do. But you see she's doing a lot of passive, active and passive debuffing. And then now let's not forget about her trait either. Magic attack increases by 5%. At the end of the turn, locks onto two random enemies within a four tile radius to inflict one random uh, level one attribute debuff for two turns. So you see what I'm saying? Everything she's doing is debuffing enemies. There's just so much going on with that. And it's noticeable. It's very noticeable when it's happening. So uh, for her gear, we obviously don't have a ton of options yet, but I wanted to bump up her magic attack to make the, the life loss thing be more impactful. So we went with this that gives her a little bit more magic attack. Here, uh, fairly limited again, but we decided to give her something that would give her some buffs when she gets healed, which she will be getting healed fairly frequently, especially with Flare in the squad, because Flare is no joke. Uh, and then for her Terra Whisper, I gave her some more damage reduction. So she's got 10% inherently from this and then potentially 38% more. So in a in a perfect scenario, she's reducing the damage taken by almost 50%, which is ridiculous. So she's kind of hard to kill, right? And again, such a nuisance, such a nuisance to the team. So to the enemy team, I should say. So let's jump in and do like, I don't know, I don't know what a good one to do is. I guess we could do an, a, a level. I think I ran her with just three units recently um, in here. Yeah, just to give you an idea of what she's doing. So let, let's run it like this. We'll run it on auto, but we'll run it slow and try to talk about what she's doing as she's doing it, all right? So first of all, the, the range. Did you see that? Did you? Let, let's pause real quick. She moved up into the range of this guy and put magic defense down on him. Just by, and he was still pretty far away. <laughs> Just by being around her, got debuffed. Uh, around, around, like in the same neighborhood as her, got debuffed. Uh, and, and at the end of her next turn, she'll do it again to anyone else within range. Uh, just, just ridiculous, man. I, I have enjoyed her in weaponry trial too, because you get her up in the, you get her up near the boss at the end of every one of her turns. She's dropping debuffs on the boss, which is so helpful. That dungeon ramps up quick. Um, just a just a debuff machine, man. So it has has been very very helpful. Definitely a good a good member of a core squad. You know, you've got your damage dealer, you got your healer, you got your tank, and then you can have her just running around causing havoc, dropping debuffs on everybody. It's it's pretty ridiculous. More debuffs from Flair because of that item we gave her. Again, kind of hard to get the full scope of what she's capable of in a quick battle like this, 
but I think you get the idea. And I don't want to run something like Tower 3-3 that's going to take us 15, 20 minutes to do in this video. I just kind of wanted you to get a glimpse of what she looks like and see what she's capable of. And much like Flair, just put her on your radar because I think that she's fantastic. Um, so so we'll, we'll call this one here. If you guys have, and I asked you to do this on the Flair video, and I want to say thank you for doing it because a lot of you made some awesome suge suggestions on epics to take a look at. I've got like two more that I specifically plan to look at and make a video on, but based on the comments of that video, I've got several more. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing on this video. If you've got epics that you're using that are standing out for you that I haven't talked about, drop them in the comments below. I'll go give them a look and uh, play around with them a little bit and probably do a video on them as well. So uh, again, I, I appreciate you guys getting involved in that. I hope that this puts Abyss on your radar. Add her to the team. Let me know what she does for you. I, I bet you won't be disappointed in her. She's been so good for me and probably helped me get through a couple stages that I otherwise would not have gotten through with, with, with the, the massive amount of debuffs that she's constantly dropping. So again, hope it was helpful. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one.